Hey guys, welcome back to week 35 of the MIT challenge, which is to learn MIT's four-year computer science curriculum in 12 months without taking any classes or even being enrolled in MIT. So I just finished the 24th class of the MIT challenge. So there's 33 in total, which means I'm down to the final nine classes. Now, I finished four since the last update, and I've been working on some of them before, so I didn't do all of them in the last three weeks, but I've been working on these classes, and I finished the exams in the last three weeks between this update and the last one. And the classes that I finished were macroeconomics, computer systems engineering, electromagnetics and application, and the second logic course for MIT. Now, just some notes on those classes I just completed. The computer systems engineering class, if you're at all interested in the internet, if you're interested in the internet and network programming and how encryption works and security and basically just using networks to do computing, I strongly recommend this class. I thought it was one of the most practical classes I've done in the MIT, just that um, it's not as academic as a lot of other classes, it's not just math and theorems. It's a lot of real life examples of how do you design systems to work on a distributed computing platform? How do you understand the client-server model? How do you understand encryption? How do you understand security? And so there's a lot of those interesting ideas. So if that's something that interests you, then I strongly recommend checking out the class because it has all the lecture videos. Another class I was working on was by far the hardest class I've done so far in the MIT Challenge, which was 6013, Electromagnetics and Application. It was a difficult class for the dual reason that one, it involved a lot of difficult math, so it was a technically challenging course. And it was also conceptually broad. It didn't just have one or two main ideas. It covered a lot of territory in a lot of different ways that electromagnetics can work more on the level closer to the underlying physics and less towards the sort of circuit and computing paradigm, which is what I've mostly been working on. So it was a challenging class, and I passed it just on the nose, which is not how I like to pass a class. I usually like to get between 70 and 80 uh, percent to feel comfortable with how I did in a, an exam in the MIT challenge, considering I'm doing them so quickly. Uh, but so I didn't get that, I, did, I just passed on the nose, I didn't get to that sort of standard that I like to keep. But at the same time, uh, I don't really have that much more time at the moment to really spend another week to get to the point where I have really have that deep understanding. So what my plan is right now is to leave the exam as it is, and hopefully in September I can come back to some of the classes, if I have a bit of extra time, some of the classes that were sort of borderline and really focus on trying to learn them a bit more deeply because it was a very interesting topic, even if it was a difficult one. So those classes were very interesting. Logic 2 was also a very interesting class. It went over Gödel's and completeness theorems. So if you've never heard of these before, they're pretty much the most profound and astounding uh, theorems or truths to come out of logic and I would even say mathematics because what they are doing is they're systems of theorems and proofs basically showing what can be known that the sort of extents on what is true and what can be known and and sort of the contradictions and paradoxes that come up when you think about arithmetic or when you think about logic too closely and so it's very interesting very interesting class it's a bit conceptually difficult especially if you haven't taken the earlier logic course but I think it's a much more interesting class, a much more interesting look at the topic than just the sort of dry syllogisms that are often done in intro logic courses. That's also an interesting class if you feel bold enough to take it on. So I'm getting into the last nine classes. I'm really going to sort of the, the end of the challenge. I'm working on lots of senior level classes now. There's a few classes that are still not at the, the senior level that I'm doing uh, in the future, but a lot of them are going to be at the higher level classes. So this next four month stretch is really going to test how well I've learned things over the past eight months. One class in particular that I've been putting off, that I've been hesitant towards, was 6005, uh, which is a software engineering class. And the reason I was hesitant about it is not because it's intellectually difficult, but because it's a lot of work. It doesn't have any exams, and it doesn't have any just sort of pencil and paper type assignments, or if it does, they're very minor. They're not a big part of the course. Basically, the entire class is designing small software projects, 
and they're normally done in groups of three people and there's three projects but of course I'm not in a group so I have to do these myself and I've been really hesitating about how I would approach this and I think the best strategy is aside from I just have to do it is to spread it out over the next about two two and a half months instead of trying to do it all in a short period of time and that way try to do as many other classes concurrently with this one so that I can still make progress on it but I'll also know that I won't be investing too much time in this class so that it means that I might not be able to finish all the other classes on time. So I'm working on that class right now. It'll be interesting. It'll be a much more practical example because it's not just how do you learn faster because a lot of the ideas are not uh, too intellectually demanding, but rather how do you actually program faster? How do you actually go through the debugging process, the design process uh, to try to eliminate the most amount of time? Now, obviously, the experienced programmers who are listening to this channel, uh, experience is the best way to program more quickly. So that's something that comes with time, and that's something that I have done programming before, so that gives me a little bit of an edge, but obviously not the same amount as someone who's been working on it for a decade or two decades. So this will be an interesting experience for me to see what I can learn kind of going from sort of an amateur programmer to see how much I can speed up the process so that I'll be able to finish these projects, these design projects, and they won't consume the entirety of the next three months because I have these other eight classes I have to do. So thanks for following the MIT Challenge. I'll be updating you guys in the coming weeks on the progress on this software class and on the other eight courses, which represent the final nine classes that I'm going to be doing for the MIT Challenge. So thanks for following.